to Woman is Still Gallery. My name is Irene Dealey, and my gallery is on 3640 Chinden Boulevard, which is right next to Pond One, my favorite new neighbor, uh, in Garden City on Chinden Boulevard. And um, my email address is I-D-E-E-L-I-N-A-R-T at AOL.com. I also have a website which is womanofsteelgallery.com, and that's singular. I'm only one woman, so don't forget that. People make that mistake. Um, I also have another website, libertyletsroll.com, and uh, another way to find me... Are you on Facebook? ...is Facebook, and there actually is connections on my uh, Liberty Let's Roll to get to that, but it's... Um, Liberty Let's Roll Facebook. So you can find me. I'm all over the place. <laughs> uh, do you have a phone number? Yeah, I do. Cell phone is 208-703-6461. And I quite often lose my phone. Right now I have one up in the foothills that a high school kid at Boise High found. It's waiting for me in the office there. But... <laughs> Um, I answer whenever I can find my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you do? I am a metal sculptor. I was introduced to metal um, when I started back to school in uh, 1984 to finish up an art degree that I had started uh, back when you're supposed to go to school. So 30 years after I graduated from high school, I finally got my fine art degree from Boise State University. Al Kober was my professor in the sculpture department. He really inspired me to get uh, really taking my metal work seriously. And I love that man. He is, was a wonderful inspiration. Um, so it was from his uh, encouragement that I got involved in metal. And before that time, I'd been working in ceramic. But holy cow, I am so clumsy that almost everything, not almost every single thing I ever have made in ceramic is uh, broken. So when I discovered steel, I thought, wow, I can't break it. In fact, it's uh, <laughs> kind of broken me. I've suffered multiple burns and even a broken pelvis. <laughs> in working in, well, because I work very large. Right, right. And so, um, and because I'm kind of clumsy, um, I've I fell off a scaffolding. Um, oh, oh, okay. And fell on a the crossbar. My feet didn't meet the ground before my oh. crotch hit the crossbar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <geez. laughs> Thing. Oh, was someone around when they caught, or were you yeah. by yourself? I was, there was a guy uh, working in the next room, and I kind of slumped over in pain and laid there until, you know, the stars went away and I could see again. And then I was so embarrassed about my injury, I stood up and um, I went into the next room. He didn't hear me fall, and I told him that I needed to go home. <laughs> So he said, okay, bye-bye, and I went in my car and sat there and kind of, you know, still was in tremendous amount of pain. But anyway, we won't go there. That's... <laughs> you know, I'll edit it out. Well, it's, I mean, whatever. It, it might be kind of fun. Um, uh, so did you do all this right here? So, yeah, so if you come into my gallery, it is open by appointment only. Um, and we also rent it out for private events. We've had weddings in here. Oh. Um, bachelorette parties, birthday parties, all kinds of really very fun functions. People enjoy this environment because um, there's a fireplace, there's a wine bar, there's observation windows behind the wine bar into my welding studio. I see. So, so sometimes if I'm requested, I will go back there and do demonstrations while they uh, enjoy their wine. Um, so the, I bought this building in 2003. It used to be a Chinese restaurant and converted it into my, uh, this art gallery, wine bar, 
welding studio and cigar lounge and I'll show you the cigar lounge later. Okay, <laughs> yeah. that's fine, that's so, fun. So, you know, all kinds of things where whenever I came up with a need, I had a steel answer for it. So from, um, you know, curtain rods, all of the work around the windows, the bar, um, there's light fix fixture covers, um, there's light fixtures in the bathroom here that I did. So nice. just took old army helmets, yeah. and covered up all this ugly space under the sinks, and then here's a toilet paper holder that by the way, the bathroom in here is called the burning book. Not the burning bush. Oh, burning bush. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly bush. <laughs> That's funny. I know. Well, I have a sculpture called the burning bush. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got this too. You yeah, got all. So you got everything. Vent covers. Um, so I work not only in steel but also in cast bronze. So the work above the fireplace here is uh, all cast bronze pieces. Ooh. I take molds from um, from the horns that uh, people will give me. And then uh, from interviewing the hunters, I interpret their hunt and the animal that they caught and, and give a new form to the skull part. And then what, what happens is that women are enjoying having uh, this and the horn, the trophies from their husband's hunt in their home as opposed to a carcass because it's been removed from the death of that animal it's elevated into an art form cast in bronze oh yeah these, yeah, are, these so. look much much better yeah. and, and oh, for curiosity how much would that cost um these range anywhere from 2500 to 4500 dollars um casting pieces in bronze is very expensive it yeah. takes about a team of six people to take really? it from the mold, from the pad pattern that the artist creates uh -huh. to the the final piece. Yeah, there's you know the wax. And, I mean, there's a huge, there's a whole huge list of things process. you gotta do. Yeah, yeah. So, and I used to do. I mean, one person could do it, but. Um, it, Shoot, that'd really be expensive. I mean, it, it's just a very labor-intensive work, yeah, people, and then the materials are very expensive as right, well. Right, so, right. Oh, what do you buy your materials at? Well, the foundries, um, they supply the bronze, and it's a, you know, it's a very high-quality silica bronze, uh -huh. um, which is important. If anyone ever is to buy bronze artwork they need to make sure because there's a lot of very inferior bronze work that is coming from uh, Asia and they don't use a, a real high quality bronze so if it were to ever um, break welding it is just a nightmare it kind of oh it melts it, it, okay yeah, I see. it's just not a high quality material I so. didn't know that yeah now is the top one it looks like it's stone I know. Well, that's the patina. So you can do some really wonderful colors and techniques using chemicals that will react with the bronze. And um, the way that we get that uh, effect, we wrap it in, a, in this straw material, dip it in this chemical bath, and then that silver nitrate sprayed on it when it's hot and it kind of pools and leaves sort of stony effects. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like you carved it from stone. I know. <laughs> Another reason why bronze is expensive because the patina process is very involved as well. Wow. Yeah. And uh, How long have you been at this site? I moved in here, 2002 I bought the building. I opened it in 2003, May. So that's seven coming up on seven years. Was that a scary uh, transition? Oh man, I'm not a businesswoman. You know, I was right. a full time mother and then a studio artist, and then suddenly I had this very in your face business on a road that has thirty thousand people, and uh, it's been I was been on a steep learning curve. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah.